Good morning and welcome to part four of the UP Awards, a celebration of universal participation and a way to acknowledge organizations in Massachusetts that are doing an exemplary job of including everybody. Charles Baldwin, you are here again. We are here again. And you know, um, what y'all who are joining us don't see is a lot of the conversations before we get started. And I'm now uh, led to believe that we are pushing the envelope just a titch more in terms of finding new ways to be inclusive and to communicate. What's up, Charles? Good morning. Uh, I'm Charles Baldwin. I'm the program officer for the Universal Participation Initiative. I am an older white gentleman with a beard, glasses, and a mohawk. And today I'm wearing a blue sweater although it's far too warm for that. And to answer your question, Anita, yes, we are pushing this a little bit. Part of that is to have this, uh, this moment, this virtual moment, illustrate different methods of access. So today we have, uh, we have the captions and we have our ASL interpreter, but our performance today will be in voice and ASL. We're making or we're asking our captioner to translate, which isn't typical. And so yes, we're pushing the boundaries a little bit, but it's all an experiment sometimes in trying to define how we can make these virtual spaces more accessible. You know, one of the things that I'm learning every single day, Charles, is that um, we have to practice. It takes practice to make habits. I forgot to describe myself today. I did a pretty good job on days one, two, and three. All but week. <laughs> so I am a woman in her far end of the 60s. I am wearing a dark jacket with a red necklace. I have shoulder length hair and I am wearing glasses. Um, Charles, you know, one of the things, and we have to acknowledge every day as we come together around this very important topic of inclusivity, that we are in a world that's struggling with it, an entire world and certainly a country. And one of the things that I'm thinking about that is a feature of the UP program and something that I'm seeing across the country that feels like an inflection point is a real sense of commitment. It's not a one march. It's not a one conversation. There feels, to, feels like a sense of commitment and persistence now. It really does require that, that vision, that mission of really understanding the constructs that have marginalized people based on race or culture or language or ability. And this, this initiative that you've created here at the Mass Cultural Council, well, sometimes the movement may seem slow because in many times it's incremental to get it right. It's also experimental. The key thing is to listen to the voices on the margins, give them the opportunity to help make the change we're talking about. You said two words this morning that I'm going to now um, help myself to and start using over and over again, and that's fight perfection, because that's, that makes us stand still. If we are afraid to move forward, if it's not going to be perfect, we don't go anywhere. So we're going to be doing a little fighting of perfection today, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but again, with the agenda to help all of our listeners and viewers and anyone who's watching this after the fact, understand that these virtual spaces are now more critically important than ever to hear the voices who are not in the room. So let's get started because I know we have a lot of wonderful, wonderful performances and people to talk to today. And of course, what we're doing all week is we're celebrating organizations and honoring organizations who have done amazing work, who have taken a leap of faith, who are taking a risk, who are trying new things because they want to be inclusive. And today we're going to be learning more about two amazing organizations, Arts Emerson and Wheelock Family theater, which I know you know very well, Charles. And so shall we get started? I'd like to introduce Emily Rainey. I hope I said that right, Emily, to tell us more about uh, We Lack Family Theater. Hi, 
Yes, I am Emily Rainey. Um, I use she, her, hers pronouns. Uh, I have medium length brown hair, wearing glasses, and a gray shirt with tiny white spots. Um, as we continue to fight for justice, visibility, and equality, we are especially honored today to be included as one of the Mass Cultural Council's UP Award finalists. Wheelock Family Theatre at Boston University is dedicated to bringing the theatrical experience within the reach of every school age child in the greater Boston area. Access and inclusion have been fundamental to Wheelock Family Theatre since its founding in 1981. The Wheelock team believes that live theatre transforms lives and that there should be no barriers to this transformative experience. Beyond offering three access performances per production, featuring ASL interpretation and audio description, Wheelock offers the following access points to every single performance. Open captioning, enhanced listening devices, braille programs, large print programs, a quiet room, fidget toys, and meet the seat opportunities. The theater space is physically accessible and the box office staff takes care to ensure that audience members who use wheelchairs can sit with their friends and family. Wheelock Family Theater's student matinee series, which offers reduced price tickets to schools on a sliding scale basis, conducts extensive outreach efforts to schools serving students with disabilities to ensure that every student's visit is safe and welcoming. A Wheelock teaching artist with a disability regularly visits classrooms to provide pre-show drama shops and post-show talkbacks. Meanwhile, the education staff and teaching artists host on-site tactile tours and provide study guides and social stories to extend the learning before the curtain opens and after it closes. All on-site education classes are inclusive and the Wheelock teaching team actively collaborates with families on making any accommodations necessary to ensure the success of our students. Wheelock Family Theater has never turned a student away from our classes for inability to pay tuition and annually offers over $100,000 in scholarships and tuition assistance. Which is all to say that at Wheelock Family Theater, Live theater transforms lives. We are passionate about the work that still needs to be done and grateful to our community and the Mass Cultural Council for pushing our boundaries toward a better tomorrow. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. You know, uh, one of the things that occurs to me um, as I'm listening to this is that Inclusivity, I'm trying to make my video come on, but it's not working. But can you hear me, Charles? I can hear you. Okay. Um, one of the things that occurs to me is that inclusivity is not just about what happens after the curtain comes up and when the curtain goes down. There is This is so comprehensive what you're doing, Emily. You're thinking about um, way before a person even arrives at the theater and how you're engaging before, during, after, and in between. Uh, how did you come to such a comprehensive approach? Um, well, it, it really was in our founding and uh, uh, we are all uh, grateful to our uh, ancestors and forebears, Charles Baldwin among them, and uh, uh, two of our uh, founders, uh, Susan Kossoff and Jane Staub for really uh, learning and uh, leading the way very early on. Um, and we acknowledge that we are continuing to learn um, and need to listen deeply and be responsive um, to our ever-changing world and also to the needs of individuals. One of the things I loved, and this is a, a shout out, when we requested images for the slideshow so that you would all have your moment. Of course, uh, above and beyond, uh, Jamie Asniv at Wheelock Family Theater provided descriptions of all the images, which I hadn't asked for because, again, these 30 minutes, they're really tight. I'm asking for people to describe themselves, but I can assure you those descriptions will go in to the archived 
transcript just so they're there because it was wonderful to see that once again, Wheelock had gone above and beyond. So thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Emily. And thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. So Charles, shall we move on to our next honoree today, which is Arts Emerson. And joining us now is Matthew Harrington. Welcome, Matthew. Hello, thank you. Good for morning. Good morning. <laughs> Uh, my name is Matt Harrington. I'm the guest experience manager here uh, at Arts Emerson. Uh, I'm a white male in his early 30s. I'm wearing a white shirt. I'm wearing a black striped tie. My hair is brown and short right now. Uh, my eyes are brown as well. I have a small beard as well. <clears throat> to start, from all of us at Arts Emerson, we'd like to thank so much the Mass Cultural Council for recognizing us today at the Up Awards, among other organizations doing incredible work for the access space. Arts Emerson is committed to providing opportunities for everyone to connect with the stories they see on our stages. In line with the mission, we offer a variety of accessibility services to our patrons who are hearing impaired, deaf, blind, low vision, have ambulatory disability, or cognitive disorder to make sure that they have every opportunity to engage with our work in as an optimal a way as possible. But access is only one way we approach our commitment to social justice and the never ending work of undoing oppression and advancing equity. From day one, our focus has been transforming our city's violent history around race using art to challenge audiences to reflect on the injustices they see and to inspire them to take action, to speak out and to stand up for equity in our communities, especially in moments like these. Today, in solidarity with Black Lives Matter and the global protests against police brutality, we ask you to take a moment to contemplate the additional challenges faced by Black members of the disability community. Let's strive to be a more intentional, let's strive to be more intentional as cultural institutions to see, hear, and amplify all intersections within our communities. There's still so much work to be done, but we picked a few photos from our 10 year history that encapsulate ways we have demonstrated our commitment to access and to raise that up into, and, yeah, and that raise up our allies from the community who have helped us design experiences that work for everyone. The Fashion Accessibility Project was a unique artistic event we presented with partner Melia Lazu to a sold out audience in the Jackie Lieber Got Black Box. In 2017, local fashion designers were paired with models of diverse physical and cognitive abilities to collaborate on custom made garments in line with clients' needs and provide a creative outlet for clients to embrace fashion as a part of their identity. Members of the Access community attended the event and modeled the fashions on the runway. With the guidance and consulting support of Charles Baldwin, we were able to create an event that was fully accessible and inclusive of all abilities. We constructed an accessible runway, designed a seating plan that was flexible and comfortable for all audiences, and offered ASL interpretation and audio description services. We also worked with our partners at the HowlRound Theater Commons to live stream the event and provide technical assistance so people around the world could access this one of a kind evening from the comfort of their own homes. We were thrilled to be part of this project and provide the access community with an outlet for creativity and self-expression. In October 2019, we honored Sabrina Dennison at our annual World Alive Gala. Sabrina has been an incredible partner and ally as an ASL consultant for Arts Emerson helping to ensure access for the deaf and hard of hearing community in all our programs. From the work on stage to our talkbacks, parties and play reading book clubs, the level of service Sabrina provides to our audiences is unparalleled. And she always goes above and beyond to ensure that the ASL interpreters she selects for each show embody the essence of the company, the players on stage and Arts Emerson's values. Each year, when we brainstorm programming for our next season, Representation from the access community is at the forefront of our minds. For years, we have been trying to present back-to-back -back theater and we're thrilled to finally welcome them in Boston in January 2020 with their work, The Shadow Whose Prey the Hunter Becomes. This production in particular was one of the first we presented featuring actors with diverse cognitive abilities. 
it was important for us that while the company was in town, we were able to connect them to the cultural access community. We invited the cast to come to a meeting with the UP Lead cohort, where they were able to talk about their creative process and engage with institutions in Boston who were interested in learning about their work. To ensure the broad community could easily access the production, we partnered with our colleagues at HowlRound to live stream one of the performances. Our hope is that Back to Back and The Shadow Whose Prey the Hunter Becomes is just the beginning of a long line of programming we'll present at Arts Emerson to reflect our commitment to accessibility. We believe a great way to be a truly accessible organization is to ensure that user experts have a say in determining our annual accessible programming schedule. That is why every year we invite members from the ASL community to our season preview and after party in May to learn about our upcoming season's productions. These community advocates then meet with our artistic and our executive directors to select the shows that they want to experience and have interpreted. We value this opportunity to engage the access community in our programming decisions. In doing so, we are living by our values of equity and inclusion to the point where our audiences feel ownership over the performances. Though we have yet to announce our plans for next season as a result of the pandemic, we are committed to ensuring that the ASL community will still be a part of the decision-making process. And we look forward to the day when we can all gather again to experience incredible theater together. Great. Before I conclude, I wanna say thank you again to the Mass Cultural Council for this recognition and to our peers for this nomination. We are deeply humbled to have been considered among an exceptional and innovative group of organizations. In particular, I would like to thank our internal access working group, Sarah, Jess, Ari, Brittany, and Craig, for always pushing us to innovate and discover new ways to be at the forefront of access in our sector. We look forward to continuing the work and reflecting on ways we can improve and refine our offerings so that we are responding to the needs of all intersections within, disabil within the disability community and ensuring all feel welcome in our theaters. Thank you again. Matthew, thank you so much. And, um, you know, uh, you are actually the first one this week, I think, or maybe this is the first time this week, we've talked about user experts. Uh, which is really core to the UP program. Um, can you talk, a, user experts are people with lived experiences um, navigating the world, perhaps in a world wheelchair or perhaps uh, with a hearing aid. Um, how, how did that work at your theater? Well, I mean, we've, we've worked heavily with, um, you know, within our own access working group and, and sort of seeing, uh, you know, how, do, how can we better our theaters? And, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing more than a, a, a user expert that can come in and sort of tell you what you've done right or what you've done wrong. What, you, what can you sort of get better here? Um, Maggie Austin was sort of somebody who we used as a, a user expert to help us sort of ask us, ask our questions to ourselves and say, um, you know, how do we, how do we do this a little better? How do we make this door not so heavy? How do we, um, you know, sort of make this ramp not as, not as sort of steep, you know? And, um, we were able to take a second and, and really see for ourselves how we could we could change things up by the by user experts like Maggie or um, you know uh, like Sabrina who is, who's been in our spaces as well. Sabrina is our, our consultant for ASL, so um, they've really been able to help us uh, sort of take a look within ourselves to see how we can do better. Charles, one of the things I was so impressed with is it's not just facilities issues. Um, you're giving away, you're giving up some of your authority, you're giving up some of your power, even around programming. I think that's just, that must be tough for organizations to, to share the programming decisions. I think some of that is changing too under the vision because you know, user expert is a term that's used in the design world. Uh, the idea of the user helping perfect it, but the very practice of uh, listening to uh, the people on the margins. That's, you know, representation falls under that. The ability to listen and respond to that. You know, and organizations are just made up of people. And so that it's really just connecting on this one-to-one -one level and being responsive to that. Um, who is a leader is also being constantly, consistently, persistently reevaluated and i think that's really important too who gets heard and when so 
Uh, Thank you and congratulations. All right, Charles, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. I can't wait for the next part. <laughs> so this is where some of this virtual experimenting comes into place. I, uh, again, if the, we were in person, it would be a performance. And I, it's still a performance, but it is virtually. I had witnessed at a small benefit a performance done by Queen Mab, which is a small micro theater set up for touring, Shakespeare and other pieces. But I had witnessed a scene from The Tempest that I thought was beautiful in both voice and ASL. So I'm very pleased that we can present a slice of that Tempest now. And I'd like to introduce the director of the piece, Ms. Jessica Ernst. Thank you so much, Charles. Um, and thank you to the Mass Cultural Council for having us today. Uh, my name is Jess Ernst, and I'm the director of The Tempest for Queen Mab, a micro theater. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I am a white woman in her early 30s uh, with brown hair in a bun and wearing a sleeveless pink dress. The Tempest is considered to be Shakespeare's final play, and its themes of magic, language, love, control, and colonialism made it an incredibly exciting project to adapt. We have not only adapted the play for three actors, who will all play 11 characters, but we have also adapted it into a bilingual script for both hearing and deaf actors. It incorporates both Shakespeare's text as well as sign language. Hold on a second, there's an odd sound happening, and I want to make sure it's not coming from me. It does not appear to be. Um, pardon me. Um, so, We've created a beautiful bilingual script that incorporates Shakespeare's original text alongside translated sign language. Kristen Johnson is our director of artistic sign language, um, and she has translated all of the character of Ariel's lines into sign, as well as multiple individual lines for other characters. Not only does this give us an adaptation that is accessible to both hearing and deaf communities as both audience and artist, it allows us to explore language as a theatrical and thematic tool in a very rich and exciting way. We are able to explore spoken language and physical language and celebrate the unique expressive powers of each tool. So before we share our scene with you today, I'm gonna to give you a little summary. Um, our story begins with a magical storm off the coast of a small island. Prospero, the former Duke of Milan, who was shipwrecked there with his young daughter Miranda 12 years ago after being overthrown by his brother Antonio, has used his magical powers and the spirits of the island to call up a storm to wreck the ship that is carrying his treacherous brother and his co-conspirators and bring them to Prospero's island for revenge. Those co-conspirators include the King of Naples and his son, Ferdinand. The shipwrecked nobles are, see, are uh, separated around the island and variously led astray, tormented by spirits and visions sent by Prospero. Ferdinand and Miranda meet and fall in love. Prospero's slave, the island native Caliban, plots with two shipwrecked servants to overthrow Prospero. And eventually, Prospero directly confronts the nobles, all of whom have thought him to be dead for the past 12 years. The King of Naples repents of his role in Prospero's overthrow. The families are reunited and Prospero forgives his brother Antonio. Prospero grants his favorite spirit, Ariel, his freedom and all prepare to leave the island and return to Italy. The scene we're sharing today is from the beginning of the play um, in which Prospero summons Ariel to report upon the success of the magical storm and shipwreck and then plan their next steps. Prospero is played by Vincent Ernest Siders, who is a tall, statuesque African-American man, middle-aged with a salt and pepper beard and long dreadlocks. He wears a long flowing cloak, which broadens his shoulders and matches the color of his beard. Ariel is played by Albert Joseph, a young Caribbean-American man with short black hair, seated at a brown table and wearing a white collared shirt. Prospero's lines are spoken and Ariel's lines are signed. Without further ado, hold on one moment, please. Let me set something up real quick. Make sure we're ready. Excellent. Without further ado, I am honored to present The Tempest.
Charles, I believe we have a uh, missing video challenge. Ah, Jessica. Yes, hello. Apparently my video won't start unless the host turns me on. Excellent. May we, uh, let's, let me take care of that for you. Come away, servant. Come. I'm ready now. Approach my Ariel. Come. As thou spirit, perform the point, the tempest that I bade thee. <laughs> My brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant that this coil would not infect his reason? <laughs> but are they Ariel safe? Hmm? Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed, but there's more work. Hmm? How now, Moody? What is thou canst demand? <laughs> Before the time be out, <laughs> no more. Dost thou forget from what torment I did free thee, huh? Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sakarak, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgotten her? Hmm. Thou, my slave, as thou reportest thyself, was then her servant. And for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthly and abhorred commands. Refusing her grand hest, she did confine thee by the help of her more potent ministers and in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine within which rift 
imprisoned, thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died. It was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that made gape the pine and let thee out. If thou more murmurest, I will rend an oak and peg thee in its naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Do so, and after two days I will discharge thee. Go, make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go, take this shape and hither come in it. Go hence with diligence. <laughs> was absolutely incredible. Are you there, Charles? I am. <laughs> Jessica, Vincent, <laughs> Elbert, excellent. I have to say that experience is unlike any I've ever seen. And you know what? It's, it was a learning experience for me because honestly, I forgot to turn the captioning on my computer at the very beginning. But um, what, what an incredible, uh, not only acting what what an incredible performance let's just start with the basics but um well done and i i so rem was reminded jessica why this appealed to me so much i know that vincent and ej have worked together and at the time it was all in the performance that translated the message and i'm very appreciative of uh, your work today the actors and our captioner for allowing that to happen without a voice translation. And the way you played with the screen and foreground and background, and yeah, beautiful, beautiful, thank you. Congratulations, thank you so much. What a perfect, perfect addition to our UP Awards. Thank you very little, much. And I just wanna thank our, um, our fabulous actors one more time, Vincent and EJ, and I would love to give them a chance to come on video and take a quick curtain call if that's, if that's acceptable. Oh, if we can figure out the buttons, yes. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's There's, there we have Vincent, and here comes EJ. Excellent. How do you, now this is applause, but how do you take a bow in the virtual environment? <laughs> it's like you take it in the real environment. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. I know uh, Shakespeare at 11 a.m. isn't necessarily for everybody. I was delighted to get a part of it. And this is all part of the Universal Participation Initiative's idea around how can we model accessible features in these virtual spaces. It's not an easy third space for artists and creative practitioners to manipulate, but that's what I'm so interested and seeing. So we think about pace, we think about communication, we think about description, translation, multiple languages. And so in this 35 minutes, we've done a little bit of all of that. So thank you. And you know, um, the best practices are being written as we speak and being written right here on our uh, UP Awards uh, program. So <clears throat> tomorrow's a big day, Charles, very big day tomorrow. And <clears throat> Everybody has to join the suspense, the excitement builds as we reacquaint ourselves with Abilities Dance, Arts Emerson, Discovery Museum, Tower Hill Botanical Garden, and Wheelock Family Theater. These are all honorees, incredible, incredible examples of inclusion. But one of them tomorrow will receive a special $10,000 investment from the Mass Cultural Council to continue their work. But can't tell you who it is. Not till tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow. It's like a cliffhanger. Yeah. Yeah.
<laughs> Charles, thank you so much. Angelina, everybody, Jessica, oh my gosh, what an amazing, amazing, amazing effort today. And um, we, as I said on Monday, we are wrestling this digital world into submission. I know Shakespeare would have had better words to say that, but it was words to that effect. Thanks all of you for being with us today and see you tomorrow.